Terry, did you want to be here the last four days, last week, inside the courtroom? I love spending time with my daughters and have them hear what they have to say, but in this case, I didn't want to be here because I wanted them to speak totally freely and without the discomfort of being in my presence if they had something to say. Is that why you weren't here? Absolutely, yes. We're going to cut to the chase on a lot of things because I made counsel a promise that I would have you in less than an hour. Wow. And so we're, I'm going to be true to my word here. Um, it's 10 o'clock. I will have, we'll, we'll be done before 11. Okay. I want to talk about skiing. Tell the jury about your ski experience. What type of skier were you? At that time? Or do you want some background? I, we don't need a whole lot of background. Okay. Back in 2016, what type of skier were you? I was advanced and immediate. There was no places I would go except um, serious bumps, um, narrow, narrow little gulches, and uh, uh, I didn't do any, any big jumps. So uh, other than that, I would go just about anywhere. Okay. How often would you ski? Two to three times per week. Okay. For how many years? Well, I started... 37 years ago, it was a winter sport for my family. We lived at high elevation. Okay. And in all of your years, other than the ski collision with Miss Paltrow, have you ever been in another ski accident? Never. Okay. Never. Have you ever skied with the ski patrol? As a matter of fact, I had the good fortune. I learned to ski from a family that owned a ski resort. They were, they were relation and they would come out to Snowbird and they were, I think, it was a whole family run operation with eight children and so they, they were ski patrollers and they were instructors and I had the very best of company every winter for a week when the kids were out of school. And then I had the good fortune of having a Lions Club friend, Scott, who's still a dear friend, that lives up in Spokane and he was a ski patroller for Targi and he said, Terry, come up with me, you know, on this weekend. And, and I said, I'll slow you down. And he said, you know what, uh, just follow me and do what I do. And that's what I did. And I had the good fortune of spending a lot of time with Scott and seeing and observing what ski patrols do and how they calm people down and reassure them they're going to be okay. So I really appreciated that and okay. experience. So it sounds like you've skied at Snowbird, skied at Targi. Had you ever skied at Deer Valley on the day of the collision? No, no. That was your first time ever skiing it at Deer was, Valley? It was, it was. Okay. <clears throat> Let's talk about that day. A um, couple of preliminary things. I, I asked Miss Paltrow on Friday how tall she was. How tall are you? I think I'm now 5'5". Five, five. Okay. And Shoot. what was your weight at the time of the, the collision? Well. In the VA, you don't take anything off. You, whatever you walk in with, your coats, heavy coats in wintertime, boots, um, wallets. I give that excuse to when I <laughs> <laughs> what how, so, how, how much did you weigh about? Fully dressed. I was or undressed, probably 63, 62 pounds. 163, 162. Okay. All right. So we've, the, the jury's heard about meetup groups. What is a meetup group? A meetup group was just a lifesaver for me being new to this area, um, hard to accumulate friends. And um, so when a fellow that I was on a hike with, a, a new fellow, said, have you heard of meetup? And I hadn't. So he says, look it up and sign up. And I did. And it was a wonderful organization of groups of people where you had a shared interest, uh, whether it was dancing or concerts or skiing. And so I signed up and joined some groups, and it was really a life changer. Okay. So my understanding is the day of this ski collision, you were with kind of a group of people in the meetup group. Is that fair? That's right. All right. Did the group have a plan? I mean, were you the organizer of that meetup group that day? No, I was not. I asked Kurt to take that over because I planned on being gone that day, and Kurt organized that. Okay. It sounds like, obviously, you weren't gone that day. You ended up being able to make it. I came back a little early from wherever I was and, and just said, oh, I'm, I'm going to go ski today. And um, 
I happened to see on the list that day also was a lady that I had met when I first moved here and she happened to be a ski instructor at Canyons and but she had been at Deer Valley as well and so I called her said Debbie I got I'm gonna go I, I'll, I'll pick you up so I picked her up at Kimball Junction on the way and went there with her and dropped her off the skis and we met the group and I asked her if it'd be okay if she let our group out because she's very familiar with Deer Valley and so um, she said yes and gave us the rules of the road. Would you like to hear that? So the meetup group, you guys kind of ski all together-ish? Well, and this ski meetup group is unusual. It's like herding cats. You've got those who just want to go and, and, and they kind of know who one another is. And so they, they go ahead and, and group up and, and sometimes I wind up skiing with the uh, beginners and getting them started and making them comfortable. And uh, so they don't stay together well. We meet usually, we'll say, let's meet at Alps at 1.30. And so that's what we do. Okay. So you mentioned we set forth the rules of the road for that day. What were the rules of the road that day? Well, the only rules of the road, we are pretty familiar with the rules of the road. So uh, we don't go over that at the time. But Debbie just said, we're going to start down, Ban down Bandana because that's how we'll get to the Blacks are really good skiing. So our group knew that's where we're headed. And she said, whatever you do on bandana, do not go down the middle of the run. Why it's not? packed and crowded with people. She said, go down the edges. She said, it'll be clear. And so when I came over the edge of the hill, there were heads bobbing in the middle. It was just compacted with little heads and big tall heads. And, and I just diagonaled. I went straight over to the right edge of that run. And is that where you stayed uh, prior to the collision? I did. I stayed there the whole time because and it was wide open. So you were over to the right side to avoid the people. Did it have anything to do with your vision? There's been a lot of discussion about your, your right eye problem. Yes. And we'll talk about that in a few minutes. But skiing on the right side of the, the, uh, the run, did that have anything to do with your right eye? Yeah, maybe that's one of the things, yes. Okay. We'll talk about your vision in just a couple minutes, but sure. I want to focus on the collision right now. Craig Ramon, he just testified. Oh, yes. You saw him. He, he also testified last week. How well did you know Craig at the time um, back February, February 2016? Um, he was one of maybe an average of 15 people, 10 or 15 people would come, so I shared his company uh, during those times. and. Um, I knew him only as being an amazing skier, strong, strong skier, and and knew that. And I appreciated the fact he tended to like to follow the group and uh, be behind as the protector because he brought a lady that was a person I knew that was his neighbor. So he would bring her up and ski behind her as a protector. So good guy, good guy. Did you guys hang out a lot before this you know, collision? You um, of course at lunch we spent time together. And there may be an, a couple of other occasions where we met with him, but usually there was somebody else there um, along with us. Okay. So not exclu I don't remember being exclusive with him. All right. So, Terry, take the jury through what happened in this ski collision. Take it from, say, getting off of the lift. Yes, happy to do that. Um, it was really a very nice day for skiing and I was really looking forward to it. And of course, Deer Valley has amazing groomed runs. Found that out right away. And um, so um, I'm starting from the, when I get off. When, when you got off of the ski lift. Gotcha. So I was on a chair with um, probably four people. I think uh, Joanne, Debbie, um, Craig, and there could have been another person besides myself. And we had already met and discussed going down the right side of that run, or going down the sides. And so I came over the top of the hill and saw that and headed for the right side and I'll pick it up there. And everyone just kind of dispersed, some more to the right and more to the left. And I remember looking and seeing no one. And there, generally beginner runs, people are f afraid of the off-piste, of the off-groomers, and so they stay away from that area where the pile, the snow is piled up. And uh, off-piste can be a rough ride if you have to divert and run out in there. Some skiers can't make it through there easy, and it's a lot of bumps. 
So I start. I went right down the run and started just making nice soft turns and um, staying within that boundary. It could have been as much as five yards wide, but it might have been more like five or six feet. I don't can't, ima- can't imagine and can't remember. Lots of room. And so I'm just skiing easy and paying attention, and um, all of a sudden in front of me is two big signs. I've never seen that big of slow down signs. It seemed like they were four by eight, like a four by eight sheet of plywood size high with great big letters, slow down. I went, whoa, and I'm looking around and the crowd's about the same as me and speed wise. And so did I just, you pay attention to the sign? I did, and I backed off of whatever I was doing and then another big sign, like 10 feet away, the same eight by four by eight sheet up there big letters. Well, they're serious. Must be lots of merging trails down here. So um, I just backed off and again the skiers were on my left. We were all about the same speed and um, um, I could see down where the edge of the run went. It curved around. A tree line came out a little bit and it, the run came turned curled around and I could see about half of the I don't know if it's a montage or the Empire could about half of that beautiful building and and um, I, it was wide open. There was nothing, nothing in front of me. And so um, I came around that corner and it was, it takes my breath away to think I, this is hard because I, I don't like going through this scene. I, I just remember everything was great and then I heard something I've never heard at a ski resort, and that was a blood-curdling scream. Just, I can't do it. It was, uh, and then, boom. And it was like somebody was out of control and going to hit a tree and was going to die. And that's what I had until I was hit. That's what was going on in your mind. Over, overruled. That's what's going on in, in your mind when you hear that scream. App, that was instantaneous. Oh my gosh, somebody's out of control. And they're really seriously out of control. Not time for a hockey stop. I didn't go think about that, but most people could avoid that, I think. Good skiers. Okay. okay. And I'll move on. Okay. So you. He, you All right, I think it overruled. He's overruled. Okay. Thank you. So you hear this scream. Yes. What happens next? You know, I got hit in my back so hard, and it, I, I'm right at my shoulder blades, and it felt like, and was perfectly centered, and the, the fists and the poles were right there at the bottom of my shoulder blades. Serious, serious smack. Never been hit that hard, and I'm flying. I'm absolutely flying. Now, you're not airborne. Well, it... All I saw was a whole lot of snow, and I didn't see the sky. But I was flying in that sense. I had no control. And I remember this thinking, okay, you really got to hang on. And then I thought about the crowd on the left, and I thought, I don't know who's wanted over there, and I do not want to get them mixed up in here. And I've heard, you know, um, that maybe that's not decided about how my ribs really got hurt. I absolutely lurched with what little I could off of my skis a little bit more to the right to keep to make sure nobody over here got involved on my left side. And then it was like the ground's coming up, nobody in front of me, just me going to the ground, and you're falling far further than 90 degrees like you fall on a floor. You, you, you got that extra, and so it's quite a ways to hit the ground. And I just said, okay, you've got to protect your face, you know, and your head, and that's the last thing I remember. It didn't happen. I did glance over and saw, just just out of the corner of my eye, I could see, not glance over, but I could see somebody going by, and I'm going, okay, they're, they're safe. Last thing I remember, everything's black. Did the person who struck you land on top of you? I wouldn't know that. I absolutely would not know that. I was just surprised I had no upper body strength enough to be able to catch myself. I had no idea. 
do you remember hitting your head on the ground? No, that part, nope, that's all gone. I just remember it, my hand, arms collapsing and that's the last thing I remember. What's the next thing you remember? I'm getting an adrenaline rush here, I guess, living this again. Just being here in present too. Uh, and let me just stop you really quick. You said you're getting an adrenaline rush. Is this something that you enjoy? Adrenaline rush? Not this no. kind. <laughs> Not now. Okay. All right. So what's the first thing that you remember? Or the next thing that you remember after well, 